Um, so now I'd like to invite up, going from, you know, we talked about an interest of trees. Well, here is someone who is supremely passionate about trees and growing them and setting up an on-farm native nursery. So this is Sandra Campbell. Um, and if you don't follow her on Instagram already, then, yeah, our water care journey. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, do go along and follow Sandra. And welcome. And we invite you to talk about... Um, your on farm nursery trees. today. And yeah. trees. <laughs> so I've become a crazy tree person, which wasn't planned. Um, and I will add to Kate's thing about joy, because that's actually why this thing's got out of control. And I think I'm a living example of Bruce's <laughs> natural stage development, because that's what happens when you start. Um, I've never spoken to a slideshow. Normally I talk about trees and walk around the nursery at home. Mm -hmm. So, well, today's the first. So we'll go to the... So this is, so we've gone from like zero to, it's ridiculous actually, because so I work full time now for MPI. Um, and so it's just a side gig, it's just for fun, it's just a hobby. So we started here, so the catchment group got together, this started like literally the first week before COVID. We had a catchment group event, um, Vanessa Healy come down from Ribbonwood Nursery in Dunedin, and she's like, oh, I love talking about trees, no worries. And we went for a walk in the bush and I went home and set this up out the back of the shed, which I think we had a pet lamb then. It got in there, the cats got in there, the wind got it. I had little kids, it, nothing grew. That, no, the, they are now growing in the gravel at the back of the shed because I was spraying out there the, back of, the other day. So um, so I, we sort of based it on the fact Lloyd McCall started the Pomahaka nursery. Lloyd was my accountant. If Lloyd can do it, we can all do it. So, um, and we had, we want, uh, so I'm a dairy farmer in South Otago. We have a 500 cow dairy farm with my husband who runs there. And we, it's rolling, so every paddock has a gully. They're all fenced off, they're growing long grass and gorse and wanted to plant them. But when you start buying plants, it's expensive and it's a big project. So we've probably got 30 hectares that we want to plant. And when I began, I was like, this is, <laughs> you try and plant a space this big by yourself on a hot day and that's enough. So, um, yeah, so a project that actually improves the property. Like when you're farming, you do a lot of business as usual. You milk the cows, you mow your paddock, it's pretty cool. So it's always nice to do a project that at the end of it you go, huh, oh, right, looks a wee bit better today than it did the year before. So um, learning something new. Farming, I'm quite a hands-on learner. I, I'm not a reader or a charts or a, I just would rather just get at it and kill some things and see where we go. So, um, and I've seen this a wee bit, at the farm, we already know how to grow things. We know that things need water and shade and shelter and we're already doing that naturally. So we're not actually coming at this from a blank canvas. Um, there's a whole lot of knowledge there. So yeah, so we started here at COVID. Um, knowing nothing, I have a veggie garden, it's okay. Got the worst fruit trees in South Otago probably, but um, I'll grow the next one. And then this is Mark two. So Chris, or Tubby, my husband, throws in and out of helping me, but basically he's the guy that uses the drill, which I could do, but it's just easier to ask. So, and he also deals with the timers, so everything's watered. Um, so this is Mark two, which has had a few variations, but with the fundamental plant requirements, they need water, they need sun, shade, drainage we found out the hard way because when all your nursery drains do they lay landy hedge it dies, um, and pest and weed free, so cats are the original problem, um, kids, dogs, just everything generally at our place, so um, yeah, so these begun, and these are actually still there now, they look like that now, possibly a little less tidy, but um, everything so the whole nursery's cost me nothing really to date. I've bought some timers, maybe 500 bucks now on timers and sprinklers. Um, yeah, so they're still there. We still use them for the wee baby plants because they offer everything they need. Um, obviously I ran out of space. So this is where it starts expanding because you grow this tray this big and then it turns into puddles that are this big and then those puddles turn into a bay next to the shed. Um, <laughs> and so this is all at my house. So the house is here and this is right at the back of it. And so I can keep an eye on it. If I put it down the track shed, I'll never be. You can, you'll know so much more about species than <laughs> Amy's over the back there too. I'm like, 
you guys have got so much more knowledge. So, um, but yeah, it's nice and close to the house. I can keep an eye on it. You know, if the sprinkler's not going and stuff, you're more likely to access it. So, so that's mark two, we'll call it, and the next one. Wow. Um, so then we went to this one, which looks. Oh, so we. It's on the other side of the shed which was where you used to park the ute, but it's, and the tramp used to be there, so it's not anymore. And really all we needed was some shade and wind break, to be honest. We thought we were going to put wind break over the top, so the engineer built a, a frame, but to be honest, a sprinkler on a stand would do the exact same thing. These are actually my worst sprinklers I've got. I just use those garden ones that are long and go, because they're very even, whereas these are very wet here and not here, because they're circular. So. Out of this one, all you need is some weed mat and some protection. Um, it's on the east side of the shed, which gets morning sun, which it turns out is less intense than evening sun. So, but now they're on both sides of the shed, it doesn't matter. And then when this gets full, which turns out to thing, we go to the tractor yard. Um, which everyone loves them moving gear around. Um, luckily there's plenty of space. And so literally here, I tap into my car for the scheme. It's a timer again, that was probably a hundred bucks. And then we did the first row, and that's, so there's each of these lots has, um, there's four rows of six pallets. So, and they're all full now. And then I'm like, how do I get a, because everything comes in like splitters of two. So then I'm going to have to put a Y on my water scheme because water schemes are not my... So then I can have some more somewhere else in the yard. At least it drains here. So now we're at this... This is over a period of two years. And I worked oh, full-time. I worked full-time the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are. So there's carrot sector in here, which if I was to start... Mm. It's like 12 months from seed yeah. to planting. Um, and because I spoke at a... Like a big mm. biodiversity forestry sort of conference and I know they were going to say you need diversification you don't want to be they call them the dirty dozen in restoration and I'm like I'm at the fast five team like just <laughs> to 12. I'll be so happy. And this, these all are going to survive yeah. I'm planting yeah. stuff that's going to um yeah. win yeah because yeah. everything wants to kill a native when you start planting it yeah here's drought frost yeah. stock um people spraying gorse it, it's quite hard to keep them alive, so I'm going to go with the sturdiest yeah, ones. Totally. So, and even um, Manuka down home, I think, is not the greatest. They'll plant it and it'll die three or four years later. Yeah. Um, I suspect there's a whole lot of science behind that, but Bruce knows more about that than I do. But I'm, I don't have any background, so I've just done some stuff, tried some stuff. So these, I'm lucky. Because if I said to our farm staff and my husband that we're planting these in June, they'd all leave. Like we'd, I'd be milking my own cows. So we've got funding with our catchment group for support for planting. Um, so we did a year last year. We planted before that. I've been planting, we've owned the farm five years now, um, an equity partnership. And this come around because I wanted to do it, but our equity partners probably weren't that keen on spending 10 grand or five grand a year on plants. So I wanted to do it, had to do it with no money. Um, but now that it's begun, I'll keep doing it because it's increased our planting capacity and volume and we've probably planted uh, four loosely hectares on the farm already. Like my dad's got a duck pond so he plants around that so that's his hectare. And then we've done some other trials so um, as well. But yeah, basically we're at four hectares of the 30 so it's not ridiculous to think that we won't actually plant that 30 hectares and think how cool would it be if all of so basically the farm's along it's got two creeks which run dry most of the time down either side and every paddock's got a gully how awesome would that be if it was all um low growing natives although there's some ribbon woods that'll get a bit taller i don't i'm still i've got a next maybe go next before i so i learned off lots of other people that know way more about this than me and these are all their setups and Amy's here and you've got heaps of guys around Central that'll know more about cultivar, where to get seed um, and what survives up here but they've, everyone's setups, they're pretty, they've all started the same, a piece of windbreak and a, a bit of weed mat so um, 
This is Amy's shade house. I did ask her, and she's on, I think she's probably on like mark five or six of nursery. Um, this is one of the better ones that I've seen lately if I was to build and set up, because I can't talk about this as a commercial business. Um, it could be. I just don't have the appetite to do that. So, but all it really is is two big posts with some four by two in between and a sheet of windbreak and a sheet of windbreak. So it's, it's three metres wide or whatever. So you can still load with the tractor. It seems like probably one of the better setups I've seen. This is Ross B, who's my neighbour, who's just started. And he's now his wife's like, oh, it's turning into you. <laughs> Don't go anywhere now without collecting seed. Um, and then you've got the Pomahaka one over the back there as well too. And I know Lloyd's changed that a few times, but he uses the big irrigation pot to um, cover his. But I like moving stuff with the tractor because it. we've got a tractor with hella forks, so why not? So, um, and then the next one. I oh, so resources. So if you want to get, collect your seed locally, if I've learned nothing out of this whole process, it's how to collect seed from anything, coriander, whatever I'm growing in the veggie garden. It's an absolute free resource. It's not very hard to do once you start. And then, yeah, it's, it just makes life a, a lot easier and it's everywhere. Um, if I, in my car, and because tomorrow I'll go back down through Beaumont in the wrong area, I have secateurs and rubbish bags and a tub. <laughs> So I'll probably stop. <laughs> um, so it's not a job. I don't drive to the bush and it becomes a day event. It's just on the way past. And really all I'm collecting is carrot sector. These are my easy ones. Carrot sector, toy toy, flax. Flax I'm not doing anymore. I'm just splitting big bushes and jamming them in the ground. Um, cabbage tree, ribbon wood. That's about it. But then when you start collecting seed, it's hard to be in the bush and be like, oh, that beech tree is seeding. And I've grown beech and I'm going to be 50 before I plant them because they're like this big and they're three years old. So, so I, there is a lot of variation in the nursery, but really I need to, because you plant that, that's so much hard to look after in a gully. I'm better just to do that small stuff. Although with the ETS and all these areas joining, I need to get my head around this a bit more, but it makes sense for us to be planting canopy cover trees. So I think your ribbonwood, your cabbage tree, your coromico or hebe are all in that right height range. This is a work in progress for me. I'm not anywhere near planted enough to justify it, but it makes sense too if those areas have got trees in them. So, and the weed areas still need your low line stuff. And I can always go back and plant trees Co as well. Yep, cocoa. Yep. Yes, I'm planting that too. That's easy enough. Yeah. Haven't killed that. Killed a lot of stuff. So um, when I started, a cousin got me trees out of the Dunedin town belt that had been bird seeded in her garden, and we planted in June because that's when the contractors could come, and I'd say all of them died. But oh. you live and you learn, and then yeah. don't grow them again. So nothing lost. Um, yeah. So resources, containers. Want a tender res container return system, but so good. Um, I use that quite often. I've just started buying containers because it's ridiculous. Neighbours, community recycling points. Like you could put a, I've talked about doing one in the warehouse in Belcoutha and they're like, you build a plywood box, we'll collect them for you. So um, just something locally because everyone throws them out and it's an absolute waste of resource when you're spending 70 cents a bottle to buy them. Um, heaps of information. I learned by doing but I learned by asking lots of people questions and Instagram proved a really great way of doing that. Um, I've met a lot of people through that and a lot of other enthusiastic people about trees. Um, I've got a big book in my bag. It's just a New Zealand native tree book. So then when I do go out, I can actually see what I'm dealing with, which is, it's a good one. And they're on trade me all the time for 10 bucks. They're not expensive. Um, Instagram, catchment groups, we're running, so we've had Jo Wakelin over and she's amazing if you get the chance to have her because she's a teacher as well, so she's quite good at delivering information. Um, we've had a few nursery guys do them down south, but because they're going, they're at commercial level, they go quite deep mm -hmm. and it can be a bit daunting. So she's fantastic. And um, we've got Pukarel Nurseries coming to do a seed collecting day in March as well um, down south. So. Organisations in this space, I just put them because I don't think we know about all of them. So trees that count, 
I've used before to um, get funding for trees. So we've got a community planting site um, next to the creek. The kids plant there at school and they funded some trees for us and it was a very simple process, especially for a community group. Trees for Survival is an organisation funded by Rotary that helps set up nurseries and schools. So if you're dealing with any school locally, I haven't gone further with them, but I met them at that last conference. And Toha's, Toha's built by the same lady that built the Give a Little platform, and it's about connecting individual finance with environmentally good projects. And it could be anything, but um, I think in the space, watching that space, because I think that's quite exciting. Um, and then very, hey, I haven't read this out loud before. Hey, hey, Arta. Hey, any natural here to trust. They're actually employed. They are the nursery that you see by the, what I can only assume is a fire brigade type thing by the rail trail. And they're where you're actually going to get all your local knowledge because they're going to know the area. And um, Tim Whitaker, who I've dealt with with a drill, he's ex-school, yeah, um, has helps there. So, and that all the nurseries, there's one in Queenstown as well, have community open days. So just go along, rock on up, they'll be happy to have the help to weed stuff, but you'll learn along the way. So, uh, next. Yeah, so what's next? Seed collecting is now, it starts at Christmas. I've got Carrick Sector in my septic field where I mow my lawn. Um, so I know to keep an eye on it. And it's just a case of if something flowers, watch it, it will seed. And just get your head in the tree and have a look. Um, autumn planting. So again, we've got funding for planting, which is so good. Um, and I, it's a very exciting day when six people turn up that are all under 20 and well <laughs> fitter than me to plant. We just bring them down with the tractor and pellets and leave them to it. So can Chris gets his tractor yard back. So. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a drone trial at home. So with the catchment group, we have some funding around innovation. Uh, so we sprayed out a gully, droned on seed, and then we droned on, well, we will continue drying on a spray regime to keep... Um, weeds down. It's struck, go about this big. They tend to be more um, drought resistant because you're not moving a plant and all its roots, it's rooted in there. So I think it's got some merit, but what we've, it's similar to the, uh, we've also done a um, direct drill trial with, it's not a trial, it's a demo site with seed New Zealand natives. They're based in Dunedin and doing some drilling and they've done some dock stuff down at Watona as well. Yeah, so what I've found is the weed, the spray mix, uh, normal air chemicals, uh, the, the weeds that it doesn't kill, then seed the first year and the second year the weed burden is a lot worse, but they seem to be up above it, so we'll see how that goes. Um, simplifying the maintenance is big on my to-do list. So I'm gonna plant this year cultivars that can go under that spray mix, which we know um, and then conveniently I'll have an engineer who milks cows for us mm -hmm. and he's going to use my talon ferret nozzle that's got like a 10-15 metre spray boom so I can just chuck it on the back of the tractor, drive along the side of the gully and hopefully that's my maintenance because I'm not fit enough to walk up and down gullies with a knapsack for very long, very often. Um, the seed libraries, oh, this stuff just happens. We, this is from the Keratani Men's Shed it's, we'll call it a prototype. I was going to do one for school because when you start collecting any seed, you end up with too much of it. And when you're trying to learn how to grow stuff, you'd prefer not to buy it. So um, that's for the Warrior South School where my kids go. Then I said to a few people in districts and they were like, oh, we love one of them too. So now the Milton Prison is building 16 of them oh. thanks to PGG Rots and Seeds because I rang him up and said, want to give me some money? And he did. And he said yes which is awesome. Um, so they've paid for the materials and the guys are building them. So if you want one of them in your district, it would be really good if you just said yes, because then I'm not going to have to. They'll go to like community gardens, um, yeah, just anywhere. So as long as people know they're there and keep filling them with seed and keep taking the seed with a relatively quick turnover, because it's not really, like seed storage is, needs dark and it's not ideal for long term. Um, Back planting, we'll, I've killed a lot of stuff. We'll go back and fill back holes and gaps this, this winter, probably. Build my ETS knowledge and keep learning. While doing my actual job, 
Mm -hmm. um, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So, if you're interested, just make a start. Um, you do, it doesn't need to cost you anything for this. And it's not different to like Arnica or just dip a toe and see how it goes. If you kill it and it doesn't work, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, you'll never know where it'll lead. Which, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's never meant to get this big. Um, and like the kids help me as well, so it's guaranteed income for them forever. So I might as well be paying them. Um, they're genuinely quite good at it. Unlike some of the jobs, we get them to milk in their eight and 10. They're not actually great in the shed, especially the eight-year-old, he's quite wiggly. Cows don't like him. <laughs> but this is, he's as good in the nursery as I am. Like it's quite manual. Um, I do it often, I turn a lot of documents into, um, so I can listen to them. When it's so, or I've been on catchment group Zooms, I'm just gonna turn the video off. I'm in the nursery and so I put my iPad at my potting station and I'll just pop as I'm um, listening. So heaps of people to help if you're ever in South Otago and want to walk through the nursery, welcome. Um, and take pictures of what you're doing. It's, I'm amazed at how it's evolved in such a short period of time. Yeah, and the same with where we're planting, so yeah. Crazy tree lady. <laughs> <laughs>